So there's a big online debate on the race of the ancient Egyptians and whether or not the Afrocentrics are over-racializing their identity. And my question is, even if that were true, were they the first to play the race card with ancient Egypt? The short answer is hell no. Nah. Think about the time period. The field of Egyptology is said to have been started around 1798. What was happening in the world at that time? Transatlantic slave trade was in high gear and had no signs of stopping. Most of the founding fathers were still alive and we were 60 years out from the American Civil War. So it's safe to say that the founders of Egyptology might have been a little bit racist. Centuries before the Afrocentrics, there were the Eurocentrics and they set the tone for how we view ancient Egypt to this day. So the Afrocentrics get mocked with the we was Kangs trope, but the ones who might deserve their mockery could be the Eurocentrics. Enter the first race card played by Sir William Flinders Petrie, who directly proposed the dynastic race theory to put white folks right in the middle of the history of ancient Egyptians. Then you got Samuel Morton, who really believed in that phrenology thing where looking at black folks' skulls, they tried to say we were closer to monkeys. So it's no surprise that when Morton found a bunch of African skulls in the Egyptian burial sites, he said, Negroes were numerous in Egypt, but the social position in ancient times was the same that it is now, that of servants and slaves. And then you got George Glidden, who just said the quiet part out loud. He said, I am hostile to the opinion of the African origin of the Egyptians. At any rate, they are not and never were Africans, still less Negroes. And I see that hostility in a lot of y'all today. These folks are so racist, they literally tried to say that Nubia was white. <clears throat> Nubia. Nubia. German Egyptologist Carl Richard Lepsius tried to say that when the Ethiopians were referred to by the Greeks, they weren't talking about Negroes and that Nubia was built by a quote, dark Caucasian race. Maybe, just maybe, the propaganda from the Eurocentrics made the Afrocentrics necessary because after two centuries of propaganda around ancient Egypt, I'm more fascinated about what I wasn't shown about it. See, most of the books that I was shown about ancient Egypt when I was a kid had artwork from the latter periods of ancient Egypt where they were lighter skinned and their features weren't as necessarily classically African. But when you go to the museums, you see a whole different kind of artwork. Even brothers with afros, like, 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 how do they hide this guy? I wasn't told that like Greek contemporaries of dynastic Egypt before they were conquered, like Herodotus, for example, described the ancient Egyptians as black skinned folks with woolly hair, and that latter accounts of the Egyptians were given after they had been mixed and conquered. Speaking of being mixed and conquered, I had no idea about the Rashidun Caliphate, which conquered Egypt in 639 AD, bringing the modern Arabs into the land. Since before that, the Egyptians had been conquered by the Byzantines and the Assyrians and the Persians and the Romans and the Greeks and all those folks left their footprints since dynastic Egypt. All of this changed the face of Egypt. And speaking of faces, nobody told me that the face hieroglyph in ancient Egyptian looked like Mahershala Ali. And speaking of hieroglyphs, one of the most African things about the ancient Egyptians was the writing system itself. I mean, if the founding culture of the ancient Egyptians came in from Eurasia, where are the Eurasian animals? You got crocodiles, baboons, cobras, lions, ibis birds. You got hippopotamus. These are African animals. I mean, if an animal-based writing system came in from Eurasia, where are the tigers, where are the bears, where are the lynxes and the deers and the foxes and all of the other fauna that you see throughout the giant Eurasian continent? These animals had territories much wider than they have today. Yet the animals in the Medunacher hieroglyphic writing system of Egypt are all found in Africa. What about the DNA of the mummies? Well, I'll give you a case of two mummy DNA studies. The first study is from the Max Planck Institute published in 2017 on the mummies found in the Fayum Oasis. Over a thousand year period, these mummies had more genetic similarity with folks from Western Asia and in Europe than anybody in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, Fayum attracted the attention of Egyptologists because it's got these modernistic portraits of ancient Egyptians and they look overwhelmingly Mediterranean. But not so fast. Any true Egyptologist will tell you that the Fayum Oasis had been a hub for Greek immigration into Egypt way into the dynastic period. In other words, it had been the whitest part of Egypt for centuries, and the mummies reflected that. Not only that, but most of the mummies found there were of commoners. But what about the royalty? Enter the second genetic study. In 2013, another DNA study was published on the Amarna period of the ancient Egyptian royal family, which includes the 18th dynasty, King Tut, Akhenaten, Queen Ta'i, and what they found was a little different. Now, according to the autosomal DNA test of the Amarna mummies, their closest living relatives are in Uganda. 
The Ugandans are the closest relations to the dynastic Egyptian rulers. Second to that was East Africans, and third to that, even before we got to the little bit of blood they had from the Arabic world, were West Africans. This is where things get interesting, because Ramses the Great, the big dog of all pharaohs, his Y chromosome is a part of the E1B1A haplogroup, which is known as the African haplogroup. This implication means that not only he, but his ancestors were all of the black African haplogroup. But it gets even crazier. There was evidence that some of Ramses the Great's direct descendants immigrated to West Africa after Egypt fell. And we only know that because his DNA was found in a black American man. Business owner Dexter Caffey had his DNA tested and it turns out that his Y chromosome, his daddy's 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 daddy, leads right back to King Ramses himself. Listen, with all that, folks still might want to debate, and my page is open for that, so please comment respectfully, but I'll leave you with it. Not all the white men who first rediscovered the ancient Egyptian civilization in the 1700s were racist and biased. But for me, the most telling thing is the quote from Count Constantine Duvalny. After visiting Egypt in 1787, he wrote, just think that this race of black men, today our slave and the object of our scorn is the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. So maybe we was Kangs after all.